Welcome to this Heritage Talk on Hollis Croft and Sheffield Steel Making History with our speaker, Milika Rujik, a project manager at Wessex Archaeology. Part one explores the history of the site. Hello and good morning, everyone. Thank you, Natasha, for the introduction. So for those um, of you who don't know where Sheffield is, well, you, you're in trouble. Uh, but it, it's here. It's in a in a in the middle of of the island of the country, and from the bird view, Sheffield um, Google Maps looks like this: this big blue line. I'm going to use my mouse to, the cursor to show you things on slides today. That's done. Um, Holliscroft is here, so it's on the western edge of the of Sheffield. Um, when we have excavated the site, um, we haven't excavated the entire Holliscroft Street or indeed Garden Street or Whitecroft. The red line, which is a cross shape, shows you uh, what is it that we have excavated. And that is roughly 0 0.7 hectares of land, um, which um, is located it, it 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 was in medieval times agricultural land to the west of the medieval town and it was in an open field known as town field uh which had been enclosed into smaller parts and crofts by 1637 uh, we have done some poll research before we before we started this webinar and i know that there are a few geologists um among you there and um then you you probably all know that um the underlying geology there is uh pennine lower coal measures which is mudstone siltstone and superficial geology is gravel silt sand and alluvium um all that information is available on british geological survey if you want to look on online to see what's going on um in that part of sheffield um, so, in medieval times, it was agricultural land, and the shape, the way the streets are laid later, follow the shape of the fields that were enclosing. Um, in the uh, 18th century is, in a way, when when our um, story begins, because we don't have much information from what was going on between the medieval times and 1637, or even later, 100 years later. But in the 18th century, um, the site, in a way, begins his its life when the trustees of Hollis Hospital leased the land to a Jonathan Moore, um, who wanted to develop the land with roads and buildings and an early deed um, that tells us all this is held by footprint tools by Jewett family and that deed is a, a beautiful impressive large uh, sheet written in a in an amazing um, handwriting and it was also appended with 14 um, wax seals I'm showing you uh, only four um, here, but these are of uh, Thomas Hollis Sr. on, on the left-hand side. Um, also, Daniel Bridges, uh, John Cook, and John Hollis Jr. Um, these are the important people, important men, who were well known at the time in Sheffield and um, under Hollis um, surname, there was a hospital in town and a few other very important buildings. Um, the size of the plot um, that they have leased or agree, agreed to lease to Jonathan Moore was um, 96 yards by 29 yards, which I believe is something like 87 by 26, 26 meters. Um, and the, the date on the deed is um, 26th of December, 1726. So it's a very early document showing what was going on um, at Holliscroft at the time. Um, this is now um, Gosling map of uh, 1736, which shows three long um, blocks, uh, developed blocks. So there is, I don't know if you can see my mouse here. So there is one block here, another above, and the third above them. And uh, those blocks are divided by streets known as um, 
Hollis Charity Street, which became Holliscroft Whitefield, which is now Whitecroft. Uh, but what you can't see there is Garden Street, uh, simply because it had not been laid out uh, at this time. Um, between this map, between 1736 and um, 1787, the, the footprint archive uh, tells us that Holliscroft plot or plots were leased to numerous different people. Um, for example, to Stephen Green, uh, John um, Shatley, which is, uh, they were cutlers. Um, the tenement, their tenement uh, included barns, smithies, uh, workshops, buildings, orchards and gardens. And this is, a, demonstrates in, in, a, in a minuscule, because this was just one of the plots um, at Holliscroft, how, if you want, the entire area, the Holliscroft was developed. Um, cutlery production was recorded uh, in 1774. Uh, this, that is not the earliest record, but it's most certainly the record, the secured record for Holliscroft. So we know that uh, the, the, that was a table, knives, for example, were made there. There was a table knife cutler there, scissor maker, and pen knife uh, manufacturers were there at Holliscroft. Um, in the uh, late 18th century, um, Fairbank undertook mapping of the area. Um, this is a plan, or if you want a um, join, two plans were produced between 1787 and 1789. And we have plotted another plan um, of uh, Garden Street, which was completed earlier in 1787. And what you can see here, are a series of courts. So these dark things are a series of houses uh, and courts which incorporate probably small scale industrial um, and or commercial uh, enterprises, especially at the northern frontage of Holliscroft. Um, and you can see the similar pattern here on the south side of Holliscroft. But here in the south, there are some um, industrial bits that appear to be on a larger scale, uh, which are, with a large plot uh, consisting of these buildings here um, around the courtyard, uh, which is labeled John Kenyon. Um, and this is just one of the names that I am sure most, if not all of you, are familiar with, it's a, it's a well-known um, name and surname in uh, cutlery making, steel production and iron conversion um, in Sheffield. Um, John Kenyon uh, was a manufacturer, but primarily he was a very, very skillful merchant. He traded with um, Russia, Germany, um, Scandinavia, Spain, Italy, but also with um, North America. He traded in tools and steel, um, but in other um, various uh, types of goods. Um, he imported steel from Sweden and then later Germany. And he also imported weed from, from Russia, for example. Um, iron buttons, shears, scissors, uh, they were exported uh, by John Kenyon and company um, alongside goods such as <laughs> stockings and silk, for example. Um, if you look closely, um, this map also includes other uh, Sheffield known names and surnames such as Samuel Marple, John Wilde, Skelton family, Thomas Wilde, uh, John Harrison, for example, a son uh, and son, uh, which is a second steel work adjacent to Jen, uh, John Kenyon's. Um, John Harrison uh, not only um, had the um, steel works, he was also, um, he appears to have held the Orange Branch public house or um, at least an earlier building on the same plot, which was roughly, roughly here. Um, there is also, this time, there is documentary evidence for both cementation and crucible furnaces on site. And I will, I will explain later what uh, those, both of those processes do. Um, 
it, it, the, this map is shows the the um, the development the the growth of of Hollyscroft um, as as we as we know it. Um, it is all cutlery, steel, um, iron production, but it's also all the other businesses that go together with that. Um, the typical working class house in this part of Sheffield at this time. Uh, had a single room. So uh, these buildings on the north side, which are my, uh, which are uh, a bit smaller than, for example, this big complex here in the middle, um, they had a single room on each of three floors. And um, this is the same scenario that you can see throughout Hollyscroft, but also um, other parts of Sh of Sheffield the, this part of Sheffield and this is what is de depicted on this on this map uh, the center of household activity was uh, the ground floor and that was a living room which had the largest fireplace and it was used as kitchen dining room living room washroom <laughs> bathroom everything the cellar below was used to, for storage mostly for meat if you had enough money to afford that and coal and the floors above provided um, sleeping there were bedrooms um, the enclosed courtyards were um, semi-private spaces um, and were used uh for uh lawn where laundry was undertaken but there were also uh courtyards that had additional buildings small buildings where small manufacturing was going on um industrial activities at this time is uh anything from single journeyman to um relatively large steel works and tool making uh companies and firms such as those uh, owned by John Kenyon. Uh, the best known trade in Sheffield uh, was the cutlery industry. Uh, and as I said, this was a collection of crafts. So it was not only um, converting iron into steel and then making it to cutlery, it was also forging, grinding, finishing, buffing. Um, and other uh, in industries that, that that came together with that. The basic light layout um, of these larger industrial parts was um, very similar. Um, the buildings, as you can see here, for example, in John Kenyon, um, there are the buildings, they're grouped around the yard. And there was an entrance here, for example, which is archway, which was wide enough to accommodate wheel traffic and this is where the things were obviously coming in and going out thank you for watching part one of this heritage talk on hollis croft and sheffield steel making history